indoctrinated could not explain his toxicity. You should not listen to men's rights advocates if you want to know what they have to say. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to HBR News number, what number are we on? Number 170. Heidi Ho, Doggos, Puppers, Cates, and Snacks. This is HBR News number 170. Twitch streamer becomes wizard, hijab cheerleaders, and Hogan returns. I am your good boy, Brian Martinez, and I am here with my esteemed, okay, Alt-right entitled, rape apologizing, room cleaning, incel, red pill, reddit roast posting, fedora tipping, fascist pepe tweeting, Trump supporting, Nazi apologizing, this is American memeing, women enslaving poo-poo heads, and we're doing us a look at the best concerns, lulls, and what the hecks to bork about clam slam badger style. Let's get started, shall we? Today's panel consists of Mike J. Mike, are you a pupper, doggo, snack, Kate, or burb? I'm another. Ah. And Hannah, what about you? Are you more of a pupper person? Kate, snack, burb? I, I'm female. We don't have to make up our minds, remember? <laughs> That's right. You're fine just the way you are. I'm sorry I said I'm, anything. I'm, I identify as, as meme fluid. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Mike Stevenson, although also known as Dr. Random uh pupper, snack, Kate, Burb. Uh, I I identify as the artist, the artist formerly known as Principles. Aha. <laughs> and then then there's me, the, the Doge in charge, who always is a, a Doge, and I'm that I can't check, get away from that. And what about you guys watching? Are you guys pupper people, snacks, burbs, doggos? What 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 do you think? All right, so we have a great show for you guys lined up today, and it's really good to be back, although I have a little bit of jet lag, but I'm going to be able to get through this without too much trouble. So please be sure to continue the conversations both in the chat and in the comments section. On this week's HBR News Show, we'll be mewing, borking, and woofing about Hulk Hogan, sexy cheerleaders, the forecast for a Twitch streamer, the escapist change in political direction... And more, so don't give us a concern and keep on keep on talking about it in the comments as well as that heck in chat. And be sure to stick around afterwards for the patron only after show. Vice.com finally decided to be honest for once with an article entitled All Masculinity is Toxic, according to John Stoltenberg. Everybody can go home. We're done. There's no need to do any more homework. We don't have to talk about it, dance around the rosy or whatever, it, it beat around the bush. It, all of it's toxic. And we're going to talk about why that is in the after show. And by the way, it's according to John Stoltenberg, but the article somehow is written by Wilbert Cooper. So this is actually secondhand information. <laughs> anyway, if you would like to participate in our after shows, either as an audience member or as a participant, please consider becoming a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash honey badger radio. If you don't want to wake up one morning to find yourself unable to find our content because YouTube finally dropped the axe on our channels, which, by the way, if you haven't noticed, they have been trying to do, please go to badgerfeed.com. That is badgerfeed.com. And who knows how long it will be before we're back on the main channel doing these streams before we can switch back to this channel. It's just, it's confusing, I know. So why don't you just sub to both channels? Subscribe to Badger Live Streams as well as HBR, because we may have to move between the two. All right. So, with that out of the way, I guess we're going to go ahead and get into the heckin' stories. So, Mr. Mike J., could you please tell us a little bit about Hulk Hogan? Certainly. So, with rumors of Terry Jean Balea, better known as Hulk Hogan, Returning to the World of Wrestling, the World Wrestling Entertainment Organization has announced his reinstatement into their Hall of Fame. 
the WWE severed ties, all ties to Hogan and removed him from their Hall of Fame in 2015 after he was used, heard using the N-word multiple times in a now infamous leaked sex tape. The change of heart follows a statement from the WWE released earlier this month. After a three-year suspension, Hulk Hogan has been reinstated into the WWE Hall of Fame. This second chance follows Hogan's numerous public apologies and volunteering to work with young people where he is helping them learn from his mistake. These efforts lead, sorry, these efforts led to a recent induction into the Boys and Girls Clubs of America Alumni Hall of Fame. With Hogan's return imminent, many have wondered how the Africa, African-American talent in the WWE feel about this announcement. Three of the biggest African-American names in the WWE today, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Ettore Big E, Ewan, released a joint statement letting their feelings be known. The statement reads, how do we feel? Indifferent. We're not happy, or sad, angry, or resentful. Who WWE puts in their Hall of Fame is totally and completely up to the company, and from a career standpoint, there's no argument on whether or not Hogan should have his place. The statement continues, we do not respond with more feelings of hate. Instead, we just do not associate with people who convey or have conveyed this negative and hurtful mindset. This instance will be no different. Perhaps if we see him make a genuine effort to change, then maybe our opinion will change with him. Time will tell. All right. So, uh, you know, you guys know the story. Uh, does anybody have any thoughts on, on this? I thought it would be interesting to share. So... I mean, I knew it was only a matter of time before Hogan went back to to uh, working because he's just worth so much money. Um, but yeah, so anybody have any thoughts on this story? Hulk not care. Hulk make big pile of cash. <laughs> it seems... Pretty it, much. I guess the way I see it is it's sort of like the final nail in the, in the uh, Gawker coffin where, you know, uh, they couldn't... They, they tried to ruin his life and even take take his livelihood away from him and not only did he sue the crap out of him and get a lot of damages and put their company in danger but then he got his old job back on top of that you know i'm not a big wwe guy or you know or anything i i was when i was a kid in the 1980s but um i guess the way i see it that's that seems like justice to me you know yeah i think it's uh it's interesting there are, are are a number of different crimes out there that, that you can commit that are indicative of a lifelong attitude, you know, that are like you, you people should be concerned about associating with you if you, uh, for instance, kill someone in cold blood, you know, premeditated uh, killing and, and so on, like something like that, I would say, you know what? I, I don't want anything to do with this person. Um, if they, they really would have to prove something to me before I'd want to be around them after that. Uh, but using a word, even a, a really egregious word, uh, and, and having people say, well, that attitude can never go away. A person can never be wrong early in their lives about their judgments about other people and then learn better later on without constantly having to prove for the rest of their lives over and over again that, uh, you know, they, they were wrong about something. And if they use that particular word, of course, it always, under every circumstance, means that they have an opinion affiliated with that particular word. It can never be, uh, you know the same kind of it's, I, it's it's hard for me to be certain i'm describing something correct here because i've i haven't seen the tape i've only heard descriptions of it i don't think but it's my the, understanding that it was it I was yelled it, in the middle of sex as part of uh, a no, it was no not. <laughs> okay it was, i thought it was like <laughs> i might be wrong about shared, this he shared some thoughts about his daughter uh, yeah, potentially see. dating a black man and um cool here's my question yeah. was that was that actually yeah. was there audio of that because i heard there was a transcript of it and it only came but out it's not. it only came out after hogan threatened legal action against gawker for releasing the sex tape in the first place so there was the, the sex tape came out so and it, gawker was a, leaked it, it was definitely 
and then and then Hogan basically said, I'm going to sue your ass for putting this tape out. It's like a invasion of privacy thing, whatever you want to call it. It's like if, you know, if Kim Kardashian's sex tape was leaked by a, by a magazine uh, or, or a website, but, a transcript. but she didn't want it to be because, I mean, we all know she actually did want it to be. Um, then she would threaten legal action. This is sort of like that. And then after that, Gawker wrote another piece saying that he used the language on the tape. But I never heard... The tape. That doesn't mean that there's no audio out there, but I never heard the tape. But that was yeah, see, that's them the thing. doubling I've never, down. I've never wanted to watch the tape because uh, for the same re reason I haven't any of the times that a sex tape has been released and the person has come out and said, I don't want, I don't want this released. I don't go tracking it down because it just I don't I don't really enjoy watching people's private moments knowing that they didn't want that out there. Like, that's not my thing. Sure. Uh, so, but, but in any case, and I've never heard the audio, so I don't know. Like, I've heard different stories about what the audio was. Well, in any case, so he had an opinion about a particular individual. It also, it still doesn't make it an opinion of an entire race. I've heard shit like that from people around me all my life, you know, where, and, and I've heard people make stupid differentiations as an excuse for using the term. And personally, I, you know, I, I don't like uh, words that are designed to hurt people specifically uh, because of, of, of historical differences like that. You know, I don't like racial slurs. Um, sure. It's, it's other people's choice if they use them, and it's other people's choice how they use them. And I'm not going to judge people for using them because everybody grew up differently than I did, and I grew up differently than each individual other person did. But the idea that somebody can't, over the course of years, if they have, if they're wrong about an entire group of people and they have misconceptions about an entire group of people when they're in their twenties or in their, in their thirties or even clear up to their forties and, and 10 years later, they might be different. The idea that that's not possible and that they've got to go through their entire life reproving over and over again, that they're still reformed. It, and we don't necessarily do that with people that commit genuinely egregious, directly physically damaging crimes against other people. Is is insane. It's absolutely insane to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, well, you, a... you can say all kinds of stupid shit, and and the older you get, the more shit that you've said in your life, you're gonna look back on and be like, you know, I was really kind of, I had my head up my ass when I said that. You know, that kind of thing doesn't necessarily make you an evil person uh mike you were gonna say something yeah more to the point if we don't have a recording of the of, of the of the thing that we are told was said and we don't know what was said before and after the thing we're told was said then for all we know it was said in the context of a joke or in the context of a hey i i am saying this because it's a thing i know i'm not allowed to say and rah and that's the context of the thing mm -hmm. but i think it maybe is at the point where he, 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 well, if there's no recording, then you're at the point where it's more difficult <laughs> to try and explain yeah. how that works. Than well, there, there is a little more yet. information on that. Um, I looked it up, and I guess when they first released it, it was the audio's there. It's like really, really hard to make out, but it's there. And I guess somebody, possibly Gawker, took and cleaned it up and put a transcript along with it. So it had it was kind of like bad audio. And then one of those, one of our, our people at Gawker, they, they went through and clean it up and they said, ah, he said this. And so was that audio then, cause I'm, I mean, you know, if that's what he really said, then that, that's a different, then we can have that discussion. But, um, was the audio then re-released so people can listen to it and hear him oh, yeah. say it? Yeah, okay. It's out there. All right. So, so, you know, if, if he... Because I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't trust Gawker that much. I don't know if that's something that you know that anybody here sort of mirrors in terms of their opinions on Gawker. I don't. I find him to be a, uh, you know, not kind of untrustworthy. But salt of the earth, mate. Salt of the earth. Zero credibility. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I would listen to the audio, and if it sounds like he said it, then then we would have to get the context and everything else. But nonetheless. And this is the thing that's kind of cool, because um, we got to move on to the other stories. The WWE saw fit that because maybe it's because he beat Gawker in the case, maybe it's because they felt that enough time had gone by that they were you know willing to you know maybe he was even 
sort of coming at them and saying, hey, I'd like to come back and work because this is what I know how to do. And I don't want to end up, you know, in a deli somewhere like uh, Mickey Rourke, you know, then maybe they saw fit to like let him come back because they knew he would like, you know, everybody was ready to have him back or whatever. But um, I guess at the end of the day, it looks like he's winning still. And I'm kind of glad. And I think it's a little, I don't know, I guess it's a bit bothersome that you go to like the three or some of the top black performers in the WWE to find out how they feel about it. Because a part of it, to me, feels as though uh, maybe they're, they're hoping to like stir up more shit. And the, the fact that they're relatively ambivalent is, is nice. Uh, but I think that in a way, if someone puts you on the spot in the public eye, on the, on the internet, you know, or I'm sorry, in, in the media, in the news, and they say, how do you feel about this thing? They're kind of telling you, you have to be outraged somewhat, but you certainly are not allowed to be okay with it. And it takes um, some degree of having zero fucks to be able to then say, I don't care. Like as an example, one guy that I didn't never, I never thought I would have this level of respect for ever um, is Lil Wayne. When they had brought him on CNN multiple times to try to get him to go along with the Black Lives Matter race baiting narrative, he pushed back against it overtly every time, and they couldn't get him to to um, feel a diff. Oh, you know, essentially the go along with this thing that's this sort of divisive attitude. And I had to say that I was surprised and very pleased because that's difficult to do, and and to do that knowing that that people could use this to try to ruin your career it's not that people can't like if you genuinely feel that 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 word is inexcusable and that you know there should be retribution or whatever that's one thing but if you actually don't care that much but you feel the pressure to go along with it and say yeah i actually do care or you know yeah that kind of bugs me but whatever then um i guess i'm i would be much happier if you were more honest about what you think and at the end of the day i think that people that say things no matter what if it's in the privacy of their own home or if it's in in a context that we don't have all the info on i don't think that that should be the measure of their worth i think we should look at the things that they do and the and the people that they travel with and the, and that kind of thing and i, I think that uh hogan seems to me a decent enough person that he wouldn't he wouldn't need to um i guess he, he shouldn't have to apologize for that and that, that shouldn't haunt him you know i think it should come down to what he does his actions and that's the thing about the the sjw's that i've noticed is that they don't care about what you do they don't care about the good that you do for people they care about what you say they care about what you show people it's like virtue signaling to them is more important than action than actually helping people than doing the right thing at least it seems that way sometimes so anyway well the, the, they're treading a very fine line with uh, wwe or with uh, pro wrestling in general because it's got millions of children literally mm -hmm. i'm not exaggerating millions of children sort of lionizing these characters and and emulating the things they do in their in their play wrestling and that's okay because play wrestling is okay play wrestling is integral to many if not most like placental mammals i think but but when you're in charge of of a, of a, of a spectacle of play fighting like that it's kind of you can see why they're trying to trying extra hard to be responsible not to turn it into a race war mm -hmm. like we like oh, we we'll like play wrestling but when it becomes, hey, let's have the black ones wrestling the white ones, <laughs> just for fun. Yeah, yeah, you can see you can see how the fun can be misinterpreted and maybe even corrupted. Oh, you, yeah, you you've got no idea, Mike. Just the efforts that Vince has gone to within the last yeah. couple of years <laughs> to try to clean up the WWE as much as possible. That's why you don't see uh, tons of people bleeding anymore. That's why they tried to tone down the sexuality just a bit, just a smidge. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, yeah. that that's that that's always been the case. Like I said, I was a I was a fan as a kid, you know, in the 80s. So but that was when it was great, when the WWF was awesome when I was a kid in the 80s. And I swore to God that could have been real. <laughs> 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 uh, well, anyway, um, we got to we got to move on. But uh, congrats, Hogan. I, I'm glad fucking, that you I got remember the in. Undertaker before he went all Sons of Anarchy. Fucking okay, pissing here for anyone who remembers the Undertaker before he went all sons of anarchy. Yes, <laughs> I remember was the best. 
I was there when The Undertaker came out, like when he was brand new. And I was like, who is this bitch? But anyway. I was I there did. when Yokozuna <laughs> locked him in the casket, man. <laughs> okay. That was theater. That was true theater. It was. It was. It was, it was Shakespearean. There was definitely a lot of that. Uh, all right. So <laughs> let's uh, let's move on. Congrats, Hogan. I'm, I'm happy for you. So speaking of – since we're still on the topic of sports performance – by the way, uh, somebody made a joke about, like, asked if, if um, we had, you know, basically said that wrestling is LARPing. Wrestling is LARPing. That is what it is <laughs> when you think about it. All right. So, Mr. J. Mr. J. Well, after recent allegations that their dancers were subjected to sexual harassment, the Dallas, Texas based Mavericks basketball team think they have a solution make their dancers less sexy a revamp is in the works to make the dancers uniforms more modest but the changes aren't planned to stop there new ceo cynthia marshall says that the dancers should be focused on more as artists and highlighted for their skill and quote not be eye candy or sexualized changes to the dancers routines are planned a calendar featuring the dancers has been removed and the team also hopes to include dancers of different body types as well oh my not god Everyone is happy with the proposed changes. One former dancer who remains anonymous stated that the, quote, culture of harassment needs to change, not the uniforms. Uh, go ahead, Mike. I just want to say, Rich, right off the bat, so it's it's basically the Maverick saying, well, hmm, it was because of what they were wearing. They were asking for it, I guess. <laughs> well, like my first question is, what are they defining as a culture of harassment? What specifically is happening that they are, like, are there uh, actual violations of people's stated and, and, and attempted to enforce type boundaries? Are there uh, employers trying to, uh, you know, coerce employees into activities that, that they didn't sign up for, you know, or anything like, or is it? Uh, oh my gosh, too many people are looking at me. I'm upset. Well, it's one former uh, dancer who was quoted in the article saying that it was, quote, a hug that went too far, wandering hands. We knew, okay, don't hug that person or stay away from that person because we knew that could possibly happen. It was well known and it made us very uncomfortable. So they may have actually, or if they're talking about a hug that went too far, that's very vague. Is this somebody that hugged for too long? Or is this somebody that like grabbed their ass and tits every time uh, uh, there was a hug? Because you can say something about that. That's actually, there's there's been legal recourse for, for women in that position, regardless of what they wear, for a generation, more than a generation, even... If they're in a job that is sexualized, uh, you you know you you cannot get away with that with fashion models if they if they actually stand up for themselves, and I think part of the problem with this so-called culture of harassment is it, women not standing up for themselves and women not standing up for each other in a particular uh, uh, venue or job situation where where stuff like this does happen and, and i don't know i'm wondering if this goes both ways are there because football players and basketball players and well pretty much any and any athlete I mean, even golf players are sexualized anymore um certainly you know, like uh, the, the the nerd sports are yeah. sexualized certainly footballers i mean soccer players oh my god yeah. soccer players are incredibly sexualized and nobody about, ever says anything what, what about those ice skatey folks who dance around in in, in and like get scores out five out of five Figures folks dance romantically together in a, in a man and woman couple is that oh no they're not sexualized in the bad way because men don't like that sport gotcha <laughs> yeah yeah see this is the thing uh are, are is this something that that is unique to women or are men experienced? Because I, I would bet men are experiencing this as well. I mean, the guys I went to school with that, that were my friends experienced this. Um, so, you know, not that I have no sympathy for these women, but I think they're not innocent in this situation because uh, it seems like they're talking about something that they allowed to go on for a long time 
without doing anything about it and our our feigning powerlessness when we all know that a, a female victim narrative actually has more power than logic and reason um and and yet it's just coming out now and they're they're going to bitch now because that there there's something being done about it and it's not the thing they think they should be getting done well if you want the thing that you think should be getting done about the problem to be the thing that gets done about the problem don't ask the men to take care of it without <laughs> you know taking responsibility for the problem yourself even though it's somebody else's behavior you can step up and say, this should not be happening. This person is doing this, and it bothers all of us when, when he does it. Make it stop. And it's just this one person, it sounds like. Uh, so make it stop. Not, well, uh, not we're, we're, we're overly sexualized. Oh, but don't unsexualize us because that's teach, teach, teach women not to get harass don't teach men not to harass well i mean but uh, but i mean that sounds like a reasonable answer hannah but that certainly isn't the direction that we, we should go i think that we should cover these women up more maybe maybe they just like should be head to toe in like uh you know lycra or like a uh, tight outfit that resembles skin but isn't no wait that's actually showing too many of their curves maybe instead they should wear something loose fitting you know, dark colored so that it slims, you know, and it, it blends in with the background and maybe something that covers their head and face because they have pretty faces too. Hmm. I, I, but, you know, like I'm thinking kind of desert ninja, like that kind of look. So maybe that's what we'll do next time. And we'll, we'll put the team colors on it. So, you know, it'll be like a cheerleader job costume or something. That that might be the way to go. There you go. Yeah, that's what. Of course, that's... if you if you're not good at spelling, then people would make a big mistake. You'd have the dessert ninja, and then everybody would be in huge trouble. <laughs> dessert ninja. A quick, a, quick, a quick reminder that in order to join cheerleaders, men generally have to wear a large furry costume. <laughs> well, there's another <laughs> covers, issue with covers a great deal more than the bin bag we were talking about the women wearing. Oh. Something else regarding male cheerleaders, they have to be able to pick the girls up and throw them around and catch them and not lose their backs in the process, which is not easy. Uh, and I've actually had a woman thrown into my arms once. Um, I have a herniated disc now because of that. And and she was only about 100 pounds. So uh, a lot, I got a lot of respect for male cheerleaders. Um not that not that football players are are any less respectable. I mean, they they have people land on them and end up with broken bones and injuries that make you go <sighs> when you see it on TV. But having someone fall into your arms from a high height takes quite a bit of strength and and uh, physical control as well. So, like I said, a lot of a lot of respect for male cheerleaders, and uh, some of the female cheerleaders do that too. Yeah, they, they they do. I don't um I don't know if this this team has they probably have male cheerleaders, but uh See, that's if, what you they know, need. I, they ought to have male and female cheerleaders working together. And then you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> as soon as somebody's ass gets grabbed, they're gonna be like, hey. It, have you guys Cut noticed a, a, a like? It seems like all of the jobs that attractive women typically do seem to be shrinking away in the in the name of safety or protection from objectification like if i go back yeah. to it started well it's probably been going on before this but i i know that for example uh, sex work itself has been under attack porn has been under attack sure but porn is indestructible but then beyond that we have booth babes i think are a thing of the past so which are the attractive women that would be used to advertise for companies at conventions so we don't have those grid girls are under attack. I think a bunch of them have lost jobs or something, or their jobs are in danger. And now, the, and cheerleaders before, uh, Playboy stopped doing nudes. Miss uh, America has girls. changed. Walk on girls. That's right. And uh, women now, are victims of their own choices. It's that mm -hmm. it's that culture of women being victims of their own choices. You make a choice, and there is a range of results of that choice. And one of those results is that. You have to be more uh, 
uh, you have to be stronger than your average woman regarding setting and enforcing your boundaries. You have to own your sexuality if you are going to sell it. Um, this is like any anybody that has worked in the industry, even just models. Even, you know, and I, I hate to say just because modeling is is selling your sexuality. It's just uh, more surreptitious in in some ways. But uh, you, if you don't want your boundaries violated, you have to make sure you are communicating them. And it's just the same as as in any other job. There are certain jobs, like as a, in a, in the medical profession, it's not your sexual boundaries that you're defending. It's your caregiving boundaries that you're defending, and uh, you work for a company where you ha you're you're you know you're working in an area where there's a shortage. I'm a caregiver. There are there's a shortage uh, among caregivers that are that are eligible people that are eligible to be caregivers. Uh, you can't use drugs and be a caregiver. You know, um, you have to have boundaries regarding how much you can be called in to work, how much you're willing to do overtime and things like that. And you got to be firm with your employer on that. It's the same issue with a different area. But since we have a different emotional attachment and, and response to sexuality, being told that you have to set, communicate, and enforce your sexual boundaries has a different connotation in society than, than any other area of boundaries. And, uh, and that's a shame because it makes it very difficult for people to work in these professions without ha coming up against political outlooks that, that mm -hmm. communicate exactly the wrong thing to them and, and people who claim to speak for them and uh, people who claim to have that, that, that eliminating their jobs is the solution to all of their problems. You know, it, it, it kind of screws things up for them and really – the control ought to be on, on all of this ought to be put in the hands of the people who work in those professions and not people with political agendas that want to decide how their lives ought to be. Also bear in mind that this, this change is not just going to be with the uniforms by the new CEO, Cynthia Marshall, but they're also hoping to include dancers of other body types as well, body types. So what that means I guess we'll see, but we already we know that they've started the same kind of rhetoric around Miss America um, as well. So we'll see. We'll see what 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 oh, the future I, holds. It should be interesting. I want them to go all Galaxy Express nine ninety nine with it and start bringing in the the uh, with the the, the pre cyborg term version of cyborgs where they used to say machine bodies in in the the dubs yeah <laughs> and bring in people with the crystal body type and the the metallic body type and you know my body is made entirely of straws well you're illegal in california <laughs> yeah well, we, well, we all know what this is code for ca yeah we we, we yeah we we do know that although it's interesting that california would have a problem with plastic women um <laughs> so let's go ahead and look at the Ooh. super chats uh, before we move on to the next story. French Honey Badger gives us five dollars and says, "Don't tell women how to dress. Tell men not to rape." LOL. Joey Jojo gives us five dollars and says, "Cover up the female form because the male sexuality is predatory, but also censor and remove sexy fictional women because men can't have that either." French Honey, French Honey Badger gives another five dollars and says, "And those rugby players drools." Yeah, I guess those guys are pretty popular too. Mr. Roboto gives us two dollars and says, "Since sexy women are illegal, now patriarchy wins." Ah, that's that's only that's only phase eight X of our plan to reclaim the the patriarchal rule of the planet. Once we have, we have to make them our slaves and and essentially use them for breeding purposes only, and then we win. But we still have a yeah, few more you know steps to go. You guys are the worst patriarchy ever. Like every time there is a complaint about women's experiences, all of the rules suddenly have to change. Oh my God, we have to do something about this. It's terrible. Women are suffering. Worst patriarchy ever. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have a lot of work to do. I think that's what feminists mean when they say that. Joey Jojo gives us another $5 and says, Feminists want Sharia law. In Sharia law, women are covered up and owned by 20% of men, while the 80% of undesirables are suicide bombers. Interesting, that number. 
the Pareto principle just keeps coming out. Yeah, I'm sorry my dog is borking in the background. He wants to be a part of the discussion. But I, I keep telling him that his opinions don't mean shit because nobody knows what he's saying. All right. So are there any other final thoughts on the cheerleader story that is making me want to hang myself? No? Okay, so before we get into the next one, I want to give you guys a little bit of a clip I would like to show you. This is Janet Garcia. She is the sexiest weather girl in the world, or at least that's what she's called. So this is just a little clip so you guys can get a, a, a little bit of a, an idea of who we're looking at here. I find myself really interested in Mexican weather lately. I don't know what it is. Oh, fuck me, Dad. It's good just to learn about other cultures and um, uh, precipitation. Like, yeah, I may not know what Yannette Garcia is saying, but a part of me is okay. It's okay with all of this. 33 degrees, 56%. Like, I get the bullet points. I get the bloody bullet points, and that's all you need. Minima, maxima, notchy. Yeah, all good. Fucking lightning, rain, it doesn't matter. Oh, it do <laughs> okay, so just a little bit about, about her, but now there's a story about her that I think would be really, uh, that I thought was really funny. So, Mike J, I'm handing it off to you again. Thank you, Brian. Douglas Martin, better known by his gaming handle, Phase Sensor, has ended his three-year relationship with model and actress that we just saw, Yannette Garcia. Martin, a professional Call of Duty player, often called one of the best in the world, ended his relationship with Garcia, dubbed the world's sexiest weathered girl after clips of her went viral online, in order to devote more time to gaming. <laughs> that doesn't appear to be the only reason, however. Martin reveals that prior to the breakup, Garcia had moved back to Mexico to resume her modeling and weather girl career. In a video posted to YouTube, Martin shares his thoughts, quote, I supported her decision. She wanted to be a supermodel actress, chase your dreams, life's too short. I'm playing Call of Duty full time now and she wanted to take her job opportunity. I didn't think it was going to be that difficult. Martin continues stating how resuming a long distance relationship was something he couldn't do again. Back then it was a lot easier for me to go out and see her, but now I have obligations. I'm on a contract. It's not like I don't want to do this. This is the career that I want. While Garcia was initially distraught and vented her frustrations on Twitter, posting things such as, quote, respect yourself enough to say I deserve better, and, quote, never listen to the advice of a person who has done nothing good with his life, she seems to have eventually come around. Garcia would later state, quote, I am serene because it was a beautiful relationship. We shared wonderful experiences. We grew up together. And, quote, I actually do not judge him. On the contrary, I wish him all the success. I hope that he wins that championship and it gives him all that he wants. There you go, guys. No matter what she looks like, you can put your job first. And also remember, no matter how attractive she is, somewhere there's somebody who's tired of her shit. <laughs> Not saying that that's what happened here, but this guy was career focused. That is, I, you know... I think that is something that is deserving of applause. Well, there's there's another there's another lesson in this. Uh, okay. Whenever a girl you know gets dumped, and this is any even the the most rational, intelligent, uh, level-headed, even-tempered girl you know, like the the most dude-like girl you know, she gets dumped. The the first few days afterwards everything she says about the relationship grain of salt territory uh because because the ego is going to override the brain and she's going to be second guessing everything and she's going to be angry and hurt and say things that are just absolutely not true necessarily about the relationship uh and and uh, she'll we have a habit women have a habit like we'll remember if it was a 10-year relationship We'll remember stuff you said in year one <laughs> mm -hmm. and and uh, apply it to anything that you did after the relationship is over. You tell her to stop dyeing her hair red because she looks better with brown hair. And then five years later, you guys break up and you date somebody that's dyeing her hair red. She's like, oh, well, he lied. Well, that, you know, that's just the emotions talking. Give her time. 
and she's going to sound more level-headed about the relationship after the tidal wave of something is wrong with me because this guy didn't stay with me is is past you know like you you get that first tidal wave something's wrong with me because this guy didn't stay with me oh something can't be wrong with me it must be all him i'm angry now i'm going to say all kinds of stupid shit because i'm angry now i regret saying all that stupid shit because i'm not angry anymore better start patching things up it's very very female uh so like you got it you know sister female friend you know cousin whatever that co-worker that just went through a bad breakup give her some time um because it's like she's going to look at the relationship very differently six weeks from now than she does today yeah i I, um i would i hope that he said when they when he uh, broke up with her i hate to see you go but i love to watch you leave Well, I think that would be the most appropriate thing with that particular figure. <laughs> yeah. Public, that's a public figure. Uh, okay, so I got some super chats. I'll go ahead and read those real quick. Um, let's see. A bit Joey Jojo gives us $2 and says, Abandoned women to play video games, literally me. And Ciara De Flora says for five dollars, long distance relationships suck. He made a good decision because shit would have hit the fan otherwise, and even more hurt feelings made. I agree. I think that was that was the a smart choice I would have probably had to have made because I mean, you know, it doesn't even matter what kind of person she is. Let's be honest. I don't know Yannet's personality, but the fact is that it doesn't matter what kind of person she is because men would be throwing themselves at her. She probably gets it all the time. And if you're away from your man for a while, and this goes, you know, for men too, because this guy probably gets proposals as well. He's not a bad looking guy, right? He's also pretty famous and successful, which is why he was able to attract a girl like her. But when you are apart from each other for so long, it can be very difficult to maintain that. And I think there will be that haunting feeling that that your significant other could be cheating someplace, you know, which is entirely possible. And I wouldn't have taken the risk, especially when all, you know, in in his case, it, it's it, it can be really stressful to try to focus on your career and do it at the same time. And I've also seen some people saying this in the chat, and I said this myself. Um, he kind of didn't really have a choice here when it comes to breaking up because his career was in video games and streaming, at least currently, unless he was able to shift careers. Like he had like something else he can fall back on that would allow him to sort of relocate. So he either plays video games and has to break up with the girl so he can maintain his career, or he gives up his career so he can stay with the girl, but loses her anyway, because now he doesn't have a career. And that's, and it's, it's sort of like, you know, intertwined in that. So, um, you know, I, I, I have a different take on this. Okay. Uh, and it, it's long distance relationships are a test of your relationship, uh, really. And, and it's long distance relationships that are going to be permanently long distance. And uh, you're never going to have, you're, you're never working towards, you know, you're not working towards uniting at some point. Um, like if she was not working towards, you know, maybe at some point finding work in her area, uh, of, of work in her field in his area so that, that she could be with him and he wasn't going to be able to do that either, then yeah, then it's doomed. But I mean, my husband and I started out as a long distance relationship and, uh, we've been together for over 20 years. So there is that it it took us it took us five years to get our lives arranged so that we could live in the same place and uh both of us were sought after by other people um and so i mean this was one of those i'm not i wasn't famous you know i'm not famous now i'm not like the the hot weather girl or anything like that uh and uh and he's not even known you know, in a, in a niche like the men's rights movement. 
but it still can be a stressor on your relationship when you both know each of a, each of you know the other is a sought after person but it's just a test of your relationship it's just something that you know you weather that the same way you weather financial difficulties or you weather uh, uh, an illness or you you weather your family not approving of your relationship um, anything that uh, that that basically makes it more difficult for you to remain united. It, it's but the big deal with these guys was it looks like maybe she wasn't looking to uh, to to find a career close to him, and maybe he wasn't going to be able to find a career close to her, and that's a different story. But I, I wouldn't condemn all long distance relationships on that basis because a lot of people start out far apart from each other and then find ways to to uh, get together and be together and stay together it's just a lot of work and you just have to be willing to dedicate yourself to it yeah and if you love somebody and uh, you have found a great partnership with somebody it's very very much worth it yeah for sure. It's, it's, uh, I think that, you know, he's still young. She's young. They probably, um, you know, they probably are thinking they'll have plenty of other opportunities in the future. And maybe there's stuff, you know, about their relationship we just don't know. And so if they really felt strongly, they probably would have worked it out. But instead they broke up and, or he dumped her. And I think because they're both public figures, they had to do kind of a, you know, if they don't want a lot of like, you know, people, creating a bunch of drama around them. They, they both probably decided to do this in a very clean way so that it doesn't um, attract the attention of the media. Uh, but for all we know, you know, they're, they're really bad for each other, but they had a really, really strong uh, sexual desire for each other. So uh, it, it was like a, what is it that Bruce Lee said? Um, some romances are, like blazing fires and others are like a, a you know a low burning ember and the low the low burning embers tend to last the longest um but the blazing ones tend to burn out quickly so it could be one of those deals i don't know anyway i i get again uh i will have to say this guy has is it is it called a wizard i think he's a wizard now that's that's like his level uh <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. No, he's only, he's only in like his mid twenties. I've oh. always been told a wizard's a guy in his thirties who hasn't banged yet. Yeah, but if I'm you sure give if you give this up, I think that you just level up to. It's like a lot of XP. Like you just become a wizard. Like, like retroactively <laughs> yeah. regains his virginity. <laughs> I don't know what you call it, but I'm just saying. You know, <laughs> what kind of wizard people are saying? Is he gonna have I don't to go know. bang two chicks now to lose his virginity? <laughs> <laughs> that's a it's, it's just how do you go backwards from that okay well anyway uh one more super chat then i'm gonna move on to the next story mr roboto gives us two dollars and says when the we too movement we is in we i i don't know i don't fully understand that this there may be a this, somebody said that this guy get might get me too we'll see but i don't i i it seems like she seems pretty decent Maybe she wanted that. Maybe she wanted that uh, um, American citizenship, and he was like, "No, no, baby, that's not how that works." Who knows? But let us move on to the next story, which I will. I will do. Canadian-based company Enthusiast Gaming has acquired the Escapist magazine, and has returned Russ Pitts to the company now as editor in chief. Before, he was like assistant editor-in-chief or second editor-in-chief. Bob Chipman, also known as Movie Bob, has also been rehired for The Escapist. When the news initially broke about the revival, many gamers, especially those that supported Gamergate, questioned whether The Escapist would actually start reporting on games or if it would simply go back to being the regressive mouthpiece that got it shut down in the first place. According to Russ Pitts, however, the Escapist will be leaving the politics at the door. This is even despite the fact that Movie Bob is back on board. Here is Pitts' full statement. One thing I can tell you without delay or equivocation, we're leaving politics at the door, Pitts' post reads. 
Most of us have thoughts about politics, just like most of you. And because we're creators, those thoughts might show up in our work. Avoiding that would be unnatural. That said, I can promise you no one here will share their politics in an attempt to convince you that yours are wrong. And your worth will not be calculated based on whether you're on the left or the right. Politics are everywhere. But they don't have to be everything. We're going to focus on what's fun, and we hope that you'll join us in that. Pitts' statements triggered the mob of social justice plebs that took to Twitter to add fuel to the misery machine. Some examples are from Courtney. This news about the escapist relaunching is wild. No one here will share their politics in an attempt to convince you that yours are wrong. Refusing to comment on what you think are the political aspects of games is stating what the status quo that the status quo is fine and that is political. Self-destruct your website, losers. From Bad Game Hall of Fame, the audience that's calling for politics to be separated from games journalism are the worst audience you can possibly attempt to kowtow to. And the escapist is literally betting everything on catering exclusively to them. LOL. From Enigma the Wolf Mind Mage. Escapist, we are not going to talk politics, just games. Me, you are already dead. It's so lame fucking furries even some ghosts of gg pass have come out to rant on the proposal of apolitical games reporting do you guys remember randy harper oh Jeez. literally meth yes, yes. <laughs> i guess it's so much easier to leave politics at the door when the escapists were super welcoming to a mob that harass and abuse women in the game industry no we're sorry just we'd like to forget that this ever happened sure dude I wasn't aware of this, but apparently apolitical reporting on games is actually dog whistling for Gamergate. Nick Capolozzi. Don't write for the guy who called his co-workers diversity hires and bragged about hanging with PUAs and taking publisher gifts and called Total Biscuit the evil Elvis of modern games criticism and thinks the escapist is still a good brand that he doesn't and that he doesn't bring his politics to the work. He's an idiot and a pig. David Trace, or Tress, I guess. Politics at the door translates to game coverage that ignores human angles. Gamergate was largely a campaign for apolitical game coverage, which just meant coverage devoid of a feminist critique, labor concerns, etc. Fuck Escapist Mag in its previous and future incarnation. Now, is he talking about emotional labor? No, I don't think he's talking about emotional labor. <laughs> Dog whistle for Gamergate. Uh, Jason Schreier. I wish the best to everyone at the new escapist, but to avoid political topics such as unionization and crunch and sexism and workers' rights and harassment and the rise of the alt-right and so on, is to neglect your job as a journalist covering games. Thank you, Jason Schreier, for talking about the important things that matter in games journalism. Samuel Horty. Also a big difference between calling out racism and sexism and politics. You can do the first while avoiding the second. Jason Schreier. Let's be real. The people who want politics out of video game coverage don't want games reviewers talking about racism or sexism. This new escapist philosophy is blatantly trying to appeal to those people. <laughs> In addition, workers' rights and unionization are hot topics that games journals should be engaging in, not reviewing the remaster of Spyro the Dragon. <laughs> one, one final note. I'm sorry, one final note from OneAngryGamer.net pointed out, however, this is important to point out here. Some are worried that the escapists talk about leaving politics at the door is just lip service to lure neutrals, fence sitters, moderates, and centrists back into the fold. A threat on Kotaku and Ac or sorry, a thread on Ot Kotaku in action noted that the new management have clearly removed some of the former editor-in-chief Joshua Vanderwall's articles calling out games journalism and socio-political agitprop in gaming. The thread points out that the articles were indeed political, not just pointed towards the left's end of the political spectrum. So we'll see if the removal of Vanderwall's articles was simply to stay neutral or if the escapists will eventually slide back into lockstep with other sites pushing the progressive agenda. I guess we'll just have to keep an eye on them. 
So that is uh, what's going on with that. It would seem that, let's say, uh, Gamergate, which can, you know, doesn't accomplish anything, did manage to at least get lip service paid in terms of uh, the escapists trying to rebrand themselves. Now, they were bought by another company, as I mentioned before, that is, I looked into them, and they don't seem to care about anything except becoming a bigger company and essentially making money. So if that's the case, then it is possible that they might get away from all this, like, soap just bullshit. But... Um, Whatever I, happened to extra credits, eh? Remember extra credits? I, I remember cute little cartoon. Credits. Yep. Remember that? Remember whatever happened to them, eh? <laughs> That's funny to anyone who remembers what happened to them. Are they still on the escape? Oh, they're not. Interesting. <laughs> Mayhaps they were part of the problem? Hmm. That's a good question. So, do you guys, uh, I, Mike J, I don't know if you've been looking at this much, but do you, are you, um, let's say, do you feel positive about this change, the escapist? Or are you like really suspicious? Like the, the whole bringing back movie Bob thing makes me really suspicious. Um, he's currently calling for, I believe, um, what's his name? James Gunn to get his job back. And uh, he was also, but he was also very pro me too up until that moment. So I'd be curious you know, if you guys have, if you have any thoughts on that, not not the James Gunn thing, but just movie Bob and 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 the Escapist. I was really wary of that on just the the get go. I was like, okay, I'm gonna give him a chance. Oh fuck, they got movie Blob backed. <laughs> uh, that was concerning. Um, but then what was really concerning? I don't know if you saw this, but there was a podcast that Russ Pitts was on. Um, I've never heard of it, uh, the Molehill Mountain podcast, where he went more in depth on the uh, what we mean by we're going to be apolitical. He makes some pretty, pretty spicy claims about the former escapist. He said that they were they were basically an alt right recruitment tool, and we were we were leaking information straight to people like Breitbart and Milo Yiannopoulos, and and we were just funneling funneling uh, and brainwashing the masses to to support the alt right. So uh, a guy who says things like that kind of starts to make me worry. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that the guy who bought, who owned the company that bought uh, The Escapist was on some SJW shit on Twitter. And I mean, like, people are going to have their politics. I am i don't care. I guess the, the main thing is, is that, you know, are you going to let, are you going to put it in your in your reporting is it going to influence your reviews? Is it going to, you know, are you going to be taking payola? Are we going to be going back down this road? And... You can have bad ideas if you want. I mean, I think most people have some. But just don't push them on people. And I think you'll be okay, escapist. I just, I'm not really sure. I'm, I don't know. I mean, because here's the thing about SJWs. You know, they don't think that their views are political. A lot of the time, they think that their views are simply pragmatic. That they're common sense. That they just they just are decent human beings is like one of their sort of lexicon phrases. It's called being a decent human being. So if that's what they believe, then I think that that stuff is inevitably going to creep in. But I think that when you're doing games reviews, you you can be objective. You can just say it. You know the controls work, the graphics are good, the gameplay is solid, stuff like that. But um, yeah. I guess time will tell, Hannah. This is uh, this is pretty much uh, like dealing with your your teenager who has uh, has misbehaved in a particularly egregious way uh, or, or uh, a particularly household rules violating way, you know, or dealing with uh, a uh, an intimate partner who has cheated, you know, and they've made all these promises. Or, or they've done something else abusive, and they've made all these. I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit. You know, s spending all our money on 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 uh, scratch off lottery tickets, or you know, whatever. I've I've actually heard that promise made in the convenience store by somebody who was buying scratch off lottery. We're gonna win this time, and then I'll quit spending all our money on scratch off lottery tickets. When somebody makes you a promise like that, after engaging in a, you know a history of a particularly bad behavior, you take it with a grain of salt. And you take a wait and see attitude, and you uh, you don't necessarily say, "Well, I, I'm you know not going to 
uh, believe that you can do better. But at the same time, you don't stick your neck out. And I think that's kind of the way you have to be with games journalists. Um, it's, it's especially, you know, when you're dealing with a, a teenager that made a bad decision in the company of friends who were not the best friends they could have picked. And, uh, oh, I'm not going to make that decision again, but they're still hanging out with those same friends. That's kind of what we're looking at here. Uh, so, I don't know, I just, you know, the, the, the old statement, trust but verify. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to say don't trust and verify. You know, take a wait and see attitude. Because people make promises all the time and uh, and don't plan on keeping them. Yeah, for sure. There are some things that don't require politics at all, like science, and especially mathematics. And and games are essentially <clears throat> mathematics, because yeah, everyone knows the mathematics of how they work from, from top to bottom. And it's only a matter of time before you realize that the entire cosmos is mathematics, and politics is not necessary for anything. But we're getting there, slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. uh, games is also science. One of my friends said, uh, you know, he's uh, working on becoming a game developer, and he had to learn, like, advanced physics and shit which he was like why do i have to learn this so yes it's science too absolutely all right so i got some super chats uh sierra de flora gives us two dollars thank you sierra and says gamergate round two i don't even know if we're are we on round two i thought we were like on round fucking seven or something like how long has this been going on <laughs> there's always something Mr. Roboto gives us $2 and says, Speaking of Gamergate, how is Saint Anita? Um, she is desperately trying to get her new project funded, yet is continuing to get platforms where she gets paid thousands of dollars to spit her she, bullshit. Uh, she lost her shit on a Monday in Matt the other week. That was kind of funny. Oh, yeah? What, what, what was that about? Um, it was the director of uh, Star Wars, Ryan Johnson, had made a comment about Gamergate and Monday and Matt was like, Hey bro, if you really want to know what happened about that, I was kind of there. I could actually tell you the things that occurred, you know, instead of all the nonsense you're being fed. And Anita was like, just posted something that sounded like an, like a 12 year old playing call of duty said it like, LOL. Good, good, good game kid. Yeah. Fuck you. No one's going to believe you. Yeah. Fuck you kid. <laughs> didn't sound like her at all <laughs> she probably did have a 12 year old kid like running her twitter <laughs> like she can say anything she wants and because it says anita sarkeesian like people like ryan johnson fucking lollipop headed bastard he's just gonna go along with it anyways nice try monday and matt i don't think ryan johnson wants to talk to you i don't think he wants the truth i just think he wants to fuck star wars some more anyway um <laughs> But yeah, that was nice. So Anita's desperately trying to get her hands on more money so she can remain relevant while at the same time getting to make do speaking uh, engagements. I believe she's going to be at Gen Con in a couple weeks talking about how sexist D&D &D is. So there's that. And people I are found the actual quote if I'm going to rattle it off. Oh yeah, what's the actual quote? Let's hear it. Cuz it's just it's just that good and it doesn't sound like something she would say at all. Uh, this misogynist fool was harassing and stalking me years before the hashtag Gamergate was even dreamt up by a douchebag D-list celebrity, and he wants to explain to Ryan fucking Johnson what GG really is. Lo 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 lo. Good jokes, kid. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Anita's getting a little feisty these days. I I, I remember when she used she's to starting to melt down. Uh, yeah, she's. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I hope that nobody sprays her eggs when she finally lays them. Because we don't need any more of that shit. So. You know, for, for someone who doesn't like it when video games involve ripping people's heads off and shit, she, she, she's quite fond of doing it in the verbal translation of that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> doing a Sarkeesian is just like shouting a bunch of invectives at someone <laughs> out of basically nowhere. <laughs> and then getting invited again next year to do the same thing because you're all in each other's goddamn pockets. I'm going to kill myself. You know, it's 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 funny that she's using that kind of... That's like the same language that she claims men are always using when playing Call of Duty when, when women are present. And she's actually using the language that they use. She may as well have called 
um, Monday Mad a nigger faggot or something. Just to like put the icing on the cake, just to be, just to drive him off of social media, just like go full on. And it makes me think, I wonder if the majority of male feminists and female feminists for that matter, that play online games, like um, the, what are the most toxic, the most toxic uh, community? I think it's, uh, what's that MOBA, League of Legends? And I, I actually think it's actually got a lot of women players. Hmm, I want to think about that for a second maybe they're all feminists and they think that they're 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 giving it to the man and so they're all cursing each other out in the way that they think that men are doing it to them but in actual fact the only people that are doing it are other people who believe as they do hmm think about that for a second that really uh boils my my burritos all right well anyway we're going to uh move on to the last story unless there's any final thoughts on all of this i guess just keep an eye out there is so much more in terms of tweets and shit like vice got involved it's crazy how bad it got on twitter when the escapist basically made the statement and we don't even know they're going to follow it that they're going to try to remain apolitical people lost their shit about this i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it all right, so anyway, going on to the last story. Some tweets are more equal than others. In the third paragraph of a written statement released last week, Twitter stated, quote, we do not shadow ban. You are always able to see the tweets from accounts that you follow, although you may have to do more work to find them, like go directly to their profile. And we certainly don't shadow ban based on political viewpoints or ideology. In other words, we do not shadow ban, just sometimes you need to go directly to the person that you're following on their profile page to see their tweets? As the Breitbart article explains, although you have gone to the trouble of following someone's Twitter account and have done so specifically because you want to read their tweets, Twitter is interfering in the process, denying you this conversation by deciding which tweets you will and won't see. Twitter is taking this so far that in order to read this person's tweets, you have to get off your timeline, your dashboard, your lists, however you normally interact with the app, and limit your view to just their profile page. Twitter is telling us this isn't shadow banning, as they define it, as, quote, deliberately making someone's content undiscoverable to everyone except the person who posted it. So because the tweets are technically discoverable, although clearly being treated differently and not allowing for default Twitter interactions, Twitter can say that they don't, quote, shadow ban by their definition. But the Breitbart writer and many others consider shadow banning to be hiding certain people's content without notifying them that their tweets are being veiled. Whatever you choose to call it, people's tweets are being made to be harder to find by requiring users to go to profile pages. Who does that? Or harder to search for. So you have to go to the person's profile page if you want to see their tweets. But, if, but why would you do that if you follow hundreds of people, for example? As discovered this past week, Prominent conservatives, but not leftists, are absent when you try to search by name. On how Twitter decides which tweets it will allow you to see, they state, quote, Three, tweets from bad faith actors who intend to manipulate or divide the conversation should be ranked lower. This brings up a whole slew of questions. How does Twitter determine who is a bad faith actor? And what are their definitions of manipulate or divide in online conversations? Are some tweeters more equal than others? I've got a few questions. Um, one, can they do this on YouTube with videos? Two, do they do this on YouTube? And three, how long have they been doing this on YouTube? <laughs> Seems like you've answered your own question by your third question. Yeah, they, they've been doing this for a long time on uh, several social media platforms. I mean, I think Reddit was the, was the first to be known to implement it. Um, their shadow ban is really simple. You just disappear, but you uh, think you're still posting to forums and stuff. And the only people who can actually see your posts are the moderators of those forums. Your post comes up highlighted 
Um, I can't remember whether it's like red, orange, or pink or something like that. So they know that the the post is from someone who is shadow banned. But when they first did it, they didn't really do a good job of explaining to all of the moderators, you know, this is what this is. When you see this, um, that's what that's why it looks like that. You know, uh, Twitter they didn't really tell anybody when they started doing it. They just started doing it. And this is not the only thing they do. Uh, I've experienced uh, my my followers not getting notifications of my my tweets to them. Uh, people in, in conversations, uh, like long threads and everything, not getting notifications of my my responses. Um, my suddenly not getting notifications of any responses uh, to to my tweets in different threads. Uh, let's see what else there's been. Uh, I think that's like, part to of hashtags not showing. Yeah, I think that's part yeah. of what they're saying because I've had that too, where people will respond to a thread that I'm in, and I don't get a notification for it. But if I decide right. to look at the thread, and I do this a lot, where I'll check, I will see responses and I'll see right, conversations. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then I've I also had recently uh, uh, Karn three 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 asked me a question regarding my experiences with welfare here in, in Ohio. And uh, I gave him uh, some, some personal experience information and some links to some other information. And they disappeared. The tweets disappeared. Like neither one of us, I couldn't find them in my timeline for like over a week. And uh, after I started talking about the fact that they disappeared then they became visible again so twitter is pulling some shit uh and it and it is some some tweeters are definitely more equal than others but they're not just shadow banning uh and and uh they are shadow banning but they're not just shadow banning and leaving it at that um they are censoring people's tweets they are hiding tweets. They are reducing your uh, your views that you get. They are interfering in people's ability to communicate with each other. They are uh, hiding direct interpersonal communications so that the people involved in the discussion cannot uh, see when the other person has communicated directly to them. Um, I've had my uh, my private messages, my DMs hidden. I've had, uh, it, this was an interesting one. Um, like they all just disappeared. All of my DMS disappeared mm -hmm. and I looked at them on multiple computers hmm. and couldn't find, you know, I reloaded, I signed out and signed back in, which is hard to do because I went through a period of time where like every time I signed in, Twitter made me change my password because of uh, quote, strange activity end quote on my account. Um, so I, like, my password is convoluted, long, has special characters, very weird, it doesn't make a word, you know, and all that stuff now, because I've run out of things that are easy for me to remember, and I have it stored somewhere so I can look it up every time I have to sign out and sign back into Twitter. Uh, and, and even then, didn't see my DMs for, like, a whole day. When they finally came back, a bunch of them were gone. So, and it wasn't people I wasn't following anymore. Um, it wasn't you know, anything like this. Just some of my, my messages disappeared. So, I mean, there was, there, it's been really weird stuff happening with Twitter. And this shadow ban is just the, this uh, specific to conservatives shadow ban is just the latest thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just to be clear. Okay. So, so I know, uh, Shadow banning, just, just the definition, shadow banning is when you cannot see, basically your, your, your tweets that you make, other people can't see them if you're shadow banned. Is that correct? Shadow banning is when a social media site or any other site where you can post to that site interrupts your communications, interferes with your communications with other people on the site in a way that doesn't let you know you've been interfered with. So mm -hmm. it is a means of penalizing your account. It's engaging in ban activity with your account mm -hmm. without communicating to you that you've been banned. So it's got Twitter, a slight, it's got Twitter, a, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Twitter is, is uh, uh, hedging 
by claiming that because their shadow ban is different than Reddit, Reddit's shadow ban, it's not a shadow ban. But that's like trying to claim that, that because a Ferrari is different than a Volkswagen Beetle, you know, that the Beetle is not a car. Yeah. So, so, okay. So they're working with, it's a, it's a, it's like a broader definition than simply a specific type of action because what people were calling shadow banning on Twitter before was when, you know, they'd be responding in a thread and it would say to pe other people, it would say this tweet is unavailable or it would just not let you see it. it yeah, it didn't even let you know the tweet yeah, was there a lot yeah, of times. Would, and so what's happening here is a lot like what some people are saying is happening in, in YouTube, which is, you know, you don't get notifications. So the people who don't get you notifications for when their videos go live, even if they're subscribed and maybe even if they hit the notifications bell. I know what we've had people tell us that they hit the notifications bell, but they weren't notified when our videos went live or when their videos went up. So yeah, what yeah. Twitter, what's what's going on here with Twitter, the experience people are having is, and and Twitter's admitting to this. So this is important. They're admitting that 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 this is happening, they just don't think you could call it shadow banning because they don't think that that's, so basically what they're admitting to is that if you're on Twitter and you are in a thread where there's a discussion happening or you post something and people respond to it, you may not know that people have responded. And or if you're scrolling through your Twitter feed, which a lot of people do, like if they just wanna see what their friends are talking about, some people's, posts will just not be there they just won't be there yeah. and you'll have to go to their actual personal profile page to see if they've posted something and that's so think about that in fact it's the opposite of a shadow ban it's it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a rainbow welcome <laughs> when we do it, it's just it's just a rainbow welcome it's this special thing we do what is it with progressives and redefining words <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is pretty much the same as uh, feminists defining defining rape to exclude female perpetrators by by insisting that the victim must be pen penetrated. Uh, you know, that way they don't they don't find out how many women are are forcing sex on other women and on men. Uh, it's it's the same thing. Well, if we define it to exclude our behavior, then we're not guilty of it. Yep. So that there you go. So the, it, it, from now on, if you want to know what people are doing on Twitter, just go to the person and see if they've posted anything. I wish they'd do that for Mercedes Carrera on, on my Twitter feed sometimes because I'll be out in public just checking out Twitter and a Mer <laughs> Mercedes retweets something and I'm like, oh, shit, you know, so why don't you sh don't don't shadow ban her it's fine I'll, I'll just be more careful but um anyway so let's uh let's wrap it up i guess if there's nothing else anybody wants to add about the twitter story no okay all right so well, i'm gonna go uh, just that this is gonna cost them users and everybody yeah. should also sign up to gab yeah get on gab, gab. gab and minds gab and minds and minds mm -hmm. yep minds.com gab.ai there you go. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go into the after show. Let me show you guys what it is. You've probably seen this thing making the rounds. All masculinity is toxic. Um, feminist writer and activist John Stoltenberg believes that we need to give up manhood for good if we want to live morally sound and love-filled lives. Love-filled lives. So I'm sure that anybody named Stoltenberg knows everything that has to do with masculinity and how we need to get rid of it. I want a love field life. What's a love field life? Is that like life in a love field? Fuck yes, I want a love field life. <laughs> it's even better than strawberry fields, Rico. Listen to that. It's a love field life. I know, I know, I mispronounced. I don't know. Something's wrong with my mouth. I'm like super. It's the jet lag. It's all. It's all in here. Anyway, Nece necessity is the mother of invention, and accident is the father. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're gonna go ahead and go into the after show if you want to become a part of the after show you'll have to become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash honey badger radio they're always fun i hope to see you there uh in the meantime please consider if you're not a patron become one not just for the after shows 
but you can hang out on the Discord and and become a part of our community and have fun with us on, as Allison calls it, this side of the chasm. Because, you see, despite the fact that we report on these stories and it can seem like a depressing affair, the fact is we're actually having more fun than the people we're talking about. I mean, they all they do all day is find new stuff to get angry about, and you know they're they're constantly like literally shaking. They can't stand people that wear red hats. It's just it just sounds so exhausting to be constantly outraged and cursing at people online while also simultaneously claiming to be really tolerant. When where we are, we don't we have the luxury of not having as many fucks when it comes to the kind of thing that they tend to complain about. So we have more fun. It's more fun over here. So you should join us over here by becoming a patron and hanging out with us on the on the Discord server. If not, if you can't do it, just keep you know tuning into the shows. All the live streams will be on Badger live streams. Please hit that like button because this channel is a little smaller than the other one. I don't see any reason why this one couldn't be the same size as Honey Badger Radio, to be honest. I mean, it's just as bad over here as it is over there. So you may as well, you know. So there you go. Uh, give us a give us a like and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Make sure you are subscribed and hit the notifications bell. Not that it matters. But do it anyways because hell, maybe you'll get one sometimes. And uh, yeah, so we'll we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much.